morning, Agape. Thank you for joining us again on this Sunday as we join each other virtually. Uh, we've been totally virtually for the last couple weeks. This is the last week that will be total virtual. We'll be back in the sanctuary next Sunday for those who want to come. But other than that, uh, thank God for all of you who being consistent through our virtual worship. I'm excited about what God wants to say. Uh, Jeremiah this morning, we're going coming from Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verses 10 and 11. One of my favorite uh, text, uh, scriptures that, that God has, has given in the word. I love, I love all the scriptures, but this is one of my favorites that I just carry with me all of the time. I'm praying, been praying for you, and I'm praying that something great is going to happen through the word of God this morning. Let's pray, beloved. Eternal God, we're grateful for this time of worship, uh, through your word. God, we pray that your word will come forth and pierce our hearts, our souls, that it will make a difference in our lives. God, we just stand on the, the brinks of anticipation for this wonderful breakthrough on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. I, I want to go uh, into the text and read the scripture. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, beginning with verse 10, and we're going to end with verse 11. For this is what the Lord says, when 70 years for Babylon are completed, I will attend to you and I will confirm my promise concerning you to restore you to this place. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration, plans for your welfare, not for disaster, to give you a future and not a hope. Uh, we were reading from the, uh, the Holman Christian Standard Bible version. I know you've been reading from your version, but it all says the same. I, I want to talk this morning or preach this morning from this thought. Your struggle is only for a season. I, I better say that again. Your struggle is only for a season. It's not going to last always. No matter what it appears, it's only for a season. Here in the text, Jeremiah is, is writing a letter and sending it to the, to the elders, to the priests, to all the people who were captive uh, through Nebuchadnezzar when he took them out of Jerusalem and has, now has them captive in Babylon. He's sending them a letter uh, to, to tell them to share with them that all is not lost. Oh, I, I, I want to encourage you this morning to realize all is not lost. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, it's only for a season. Oh, yes, yes. I, I want to encourage someone this morning to understand what you're going through is not the end. It's not your end. It's just a season. Seasons may be long, but it's still just a season. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. look, 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 look. God, God, God wants to speak into your heart this morning and share with you that your struggle is just a season. These children of Israel, the children of Israel were captive. They have been captive. And God is telling them, Jeremiah is sharing what God has told him that after 70 years, things are going to change. Oh, yes, things are going to change. But let's look at what, where, where they are right now. Let's look at where they are this morning. Here's, here's the first thing I want to share with you. Everyone has a past. Everyone has a past. Now, now, notice here, I, I need you to notice, I'm, I'm going to try to paint a picture here. They were captive. And being captive, they were prisoners in a strange land. And they said, while we were in Babylon, we hung our harps on the willow tree. And they, they, they used to play. They, they were they're minstrels and, and musicians, and, and they were 
play when they were in, in Jerusalem. They would sing songs and play music, make wonderful music. But now since they were captive, they, they said, while we were here, while in Babylon, we hung our harps on the willow tree. And they asked the question, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? <laughs> Look, we're so upset. We're, we're going through this struggle, this season. And their season was for a year. They were going through this, and they had literally given up and started to hang their heart on the willow tree. Look, here, here's what I believe they were, uh, believe they were doing. While in captivity, they kept thinking about their past. They, 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 they thought about their past. And, 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 and I'm here to tell you, when you're going through your season, your struggle, your season, your struggle for the season, or your, your season, that, that's a struggle. Many times, we think we just we 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 think about yesteryear. We go back and we just reminisce. And I believe the more they reminisced, the more upset they became. And they became so upset that they decided they wouldn't praise God at all. They were disappointed. Now, if you read verses four through seven, you got to go back and read verses four through seven. What Jeremiah has, has, has written in the letter that God says, while you're in this struggle, while you're in captivity, live, plant. He said, live, plant in the, in the soil, eat the food of the soil, build your houses, marry, produce children, and be as good of a citizen in your strange land as you can. Make peace. They, they, they were stuck in their past. And I'm here to tell you, when you get stuck in your past, you will go down a sorry and hurtful road. Because while you're going through the struggle, you're thinking about yesteryear, your past is your past. What, what Jeremiah was telling them, he says, live in the midst of your struggle. <laughs> live in the midst of your struggle. But what happened, they couldn't and wouldn't move forward. They were stuck in their past and refused to do anything because they thought it was over. But Jeremiah, again, he, he tells them in verses 4 through 7, live, build your houses, plant in the soil, eat the produce from your soil, marry, have children, and live in peace. Oh, I'm here to tell you. That, that's 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 the remedy. That's the remedy first of how to deal with your season of struggle. Adjust. Adjust. That they had given up. And they were remembering their your past can be wonderful, but you can't live in the past, beloved. They were struggling even more simply because they kept living in the past. They wouldn't sing. They wouldn't sing. They had lost their desire to sing. Their love for playing the harps and singing simply because they were in a strange land. Here's what I believe they were, were really thinking. As long as we're in God's land or our homeland, we can sing and then rejoice. But because we're in a strange land and we're, we're captive in a strange land, we can't sing. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I'm here to tell you, the Lord's song is good anywhere. And the reason why I know that, Paul and Silas were in jail, and they sung hymns. They sung the Lord's song. That's how they made it through it, singing the Lord's song. Maybe there's somebody who's listening, and you are, you are a witness that if it had not been for the songs of praise and, and the hymns of, of the church, that you wouldn't have made it through your season. Sometimes, see, music, the, the singing is the singing of the soul. And because I'm still going to praise God and thank God, I'm going to make it through my struggle. 
Oh, I need somebody. To, I need somebody to get to the point to to let stop living in your past. Everyone has a past, but don't live in it. They have become. They wanted to go back in their mind. In their mind, they had moved back into their past, but yet they were dealing with a present situation. So, so Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, "Look, you need to live. You need to adapt." to your season. That's the key. You, you've got to learn how to adapt to your season. Let You need to have the attitude of, I, I'm, I'm making it through the season. The season is not on me. I'm struggling through it. I've got to struggle through this season, but I'm going to make it through. I'm making it through the season because of how I look at it. Oh, they, they were looking at their struggle the wrong way. And so what happened? Everybody has a past. They were living in the past, but couldn't handle their present. So that's the first thing. He said, this, this, your, your struggle is just for a season. So the first thing is to understand that everyone has a past. Here, here's the second thing I want to look at through this. God has an agenda for your life. Yeah, look at that again. Look at that again. God has an agenda for your life. Jer Jeremiah, Jeremiah, he, he tells them, he says, you need to live. You need to do all those things. He says, now, after, after 70 years, he says in the text, then, then I'm going to do something. Look, look. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. Oh, let, 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 let's clear something up today. God has an agenda, not you. God's agenda is primary, not yours. He says, I have a plan for you. He, he says, I've got something set up that you can't even see yet. And so I, I, I need you to understand, beloved, that your struggle is just for a season because God has a plan for your life. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Look what he says. Look what he says. God has an agenda for your life. In other words, God has the blueprints. God has, a, has the blueprints for something great involving you. He's got an agenda. But the key that, that Jeremiah is trying to share with them is that you have to adjust to your season, to your struggle. You have to adapt to it and, and understand that it's just for a season. Uh, how many of you can't adjust? So a lot of you have not adjusted to certain things. That's why this your struggle is even worse. And see, here's the key. If I adapt and do all, don't forget my praise. See, see, that's the key. Can I praise him when things aren't going as well as I desire them to be? Can I can I just focus and make it through this and know that my season is just for it is just my struggle is just for a season, that trouble is not going to last always, and understand that God has an agenda for my life. God has some plans for your life, beloved. My sister, God has some plans for you. My brother, God has some plans for you. God has some plans. You are not going through what you're going through just to be going through it. God has a plan. And you know what I found out? You know what I found out? Sometimes you got to go through the fire. Sometimes you have to lose it all. Sometimes there has to be a struggle. Sometimes there has to be some pain. Sometimes some tears have to fall. But God has a plan. Isn't it? God has a plan for you. Uh, and you know what? God doesn't share the plan all the time immediately. It's a process. But what we have learned, what we're learning is that the struggle we go through is just for a season. There's some better days ahead. You haven't seen your best day yet. Why? God has a plan. God has an agenda. God 
has an agenda for your life. God wants to do something great through your life. God has already laid out what he's gotten for you. The plans have already been made. And so that, that's, that's the thing Jeremiah was trying to tell them. You've got to make, make good for, make, make the best of your situation. Make the best of a bad situation. Hang in there. Adapt so you can make it through and realize it's just for a season because you know why? God has a plan for my life. God has a plan for my life. Oh, you see that? So Jeremiah, Jeremiah was trying to get them to a point encouraged because they were really not encouraged. They were beating themselves down. Jeremiah was trying to encourage them that in 70 years, God says, I got a plan. I got a plan. Here, here's, here's the next thing I want to share with you. God wants to promote and not demote. <laughs> God wants to promote and not demote. Look what he says in the text. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look. My plans are to prosper you and not harm you. That's the key. What you're going through is not to harm you, but it is to promote you. Somebody, somebody, oh, this is, this is, this is coming home to somebody. What you're going through is not to demote you, but it's to promote you. You've got to go through some things. We have to experience some things, but the key is there are not things that God wants to harm us with. He wants us to prosper through what we go through. He said, plans to prosper you and not harm you. Look what look, look, the point says again. God wants to promote and not demo. I better say that one again. God wants to promote and not demo. Oh, yeah. So God wants to elevate you. God wants to take you up a little higher. Not pull you down. Because, see, people. People will pull you down. People will demote you. But God says, I want to promote you. And here's the glorious thing, the thing about God, that God can take a negative situation and make it positive. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. And yes, he will. And yes, he has. God, God says, I got plans, plans to prosper you. Prosper me. Make it better. God wants to make it, but God says, I got a plan to make you better, to make your situation better. He said, prosper is to, to give you more, to make it better, not to harm you. What you're going through right now is not to harm you. It's to make you better, to prosper you. I've learned, I've learned. Sometimes I had to go through some things, and at the moment I wasn't sure until I started having my faith grow even more to realize God's going to take this and make it better. It's like the old the old thing I shared, you know, Grandma used to make lemonade, and, and, and she would take the lemons and knead them. And soften them up, and then squeeze them and put them in a pitcher, and she would add the water. And then she would begin to add the sugar. Now, before she added the sugar, the lemons were bitter. Represents your life. There's some bitter situations. But when she started adding the sugar and began to taste it, she added enough till it came to the right taste. She took that lemon and made lemonade. I need somebody in here to take the lemons of your life and turn them into lemonade. God says, I, I've got plans to prosper you and not harm you. Oh, Jeremiah is trying to let them know, here's the plan. Here is the plan. But you got to follow the plan. And if you follow the plan, God says, my plans are for you to prosper and not harm you. Look one more time. Look what he says. God wants to promote and not Demo. Oh, if nothing else, you ought to be shouting, getting ready to shout that even though I'm going through a struggle this season, God's desire that he's getting ready to prosper me 
and not harm me. He's getting ready to promote me and not demote me. Oh my God. When you know that the end is that I'm going to win, that makes the difference. Well, you know that God is in control, that God has a plan that he may not be sharing, but I know I'm in his plan. His plans are for me to prosper and not harm me. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Here's the last thing I want to share with you this morning. God moves us into our destiny. God moves us into our destiny. Look, 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 look what I want to share. The text says, to give you hope and a future. Well, my hope, my, my, my hope comes to the point of knowing that God is in control. God wants me to prosper and not harm me. He wants to promote me and not demote me. And then he says, well, I'm going to give you hope and a future. In other words, I'm going to move you into your destiny. Oh, my goodness. I, you have a destiny. And God wants to get you to your destiny. That destiny is a new level. That's the prosper, prospering you to a new height. I've got plans for you, and I want to move you to your destiny. Every one of us has a destiny. Every one of us has a destiny. And we get there by God leading us there, taking us through our rough patches, our struggles for a season, so that we can get through there to get to where God wants us to be. Oh, my, my goodness. Beloved, I, I am a believer that God wants to move you from your seasons of struggle, that is to promote you and not demote you, and to lead you into your destiny. God has a plan for your life. Your destiny is down the road. You may know if there's a destiny now, and you may not know what your destiny is, but I'm here to tell you, he's going to get you there. We have to go through our seasons of struggle to go and to, to be where God wants us to be, to get pushed to, to push to that direction. God has to move us through. But the only way we move through our struggle is to continue to focus and adapt to where we're going and what we're going through, rather. Yeah, can't, you can't stop singing the Lord. So you can't give up on your worship and your praise simply because it's a season of struggle. The old thing we used to say in the old church, I grew up, I went in the valley to pray one day, but my soul got happy and I stayed all day. Why? Because I've learned to adapt to my seasons. That's the key. Learning to adapt to the season that you're going through. My praise doesn't stop. My worship doesn't stop. I've learned to adapt. And that's what Jeremiah was trying to tell them. While you're there, you're going to be there a while. But when 70 years is up, but while you're there, you have to adapt. You have to adapt and show who God is. Even in your captive captivity and even in your struggle, your seasons of struggle, you have to keep doing what God has laid in your life to do, is to give him praise. And then God says, what? I, 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 my, I, my plans are for you to prosper and not harm. He says, what you're going through, you're not going to lose it all. And if you quote, lose out all that you have, God says, I'm just moving it out so I can give you brand new. I want to get you to your destiny. And that's what God, God wants to get you to your destiny. I want you to reach your destiny, your full potential of who you are and whose you are, who God wants you to be. I want you to reach your full potential. He says, I want to get you to your destiny. I want to get you to your destiny. Beloved, I praise God for you. I just want to encourage you that your struggle is just for a season. It's just for a season. And while you're in this season, don't live in your past, live in the present. and Praise your way on through it. Yes, yes, you can. You can praise your way through this thing. And that's what they, they, they weren't doing. They could have praised their way through these years, but they... 
hung the harps on the willow tree and said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Easily open up your mouth and give God some praise. Oh, thank God for you. If you're watching and you don't know who Jesus is, I want to invite you to give your life to Christ. Well, how do you do that? You may be asking, Pastor, well, how do I do that? Well, the first thing is to acknowledge that you are a sinner, not saved. I'm a sinner, I'm not saved. If you died tonight, you would spend your eternity in a burning hell. That's the first thing, is to acknowledge that you are a sinner, not saved. Secondly, is to acknowledge that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on Calvary's cross for your sins. So, Pastor Witt, I, I acknowledge I am a sinner, not saved. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died for my sins. Here's the third thing. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart, knocking. But he will not come in until you invite him in to your heart. And so the third thing is to say, Lord, will you come into my heart? Will you come into my life? I'm inviting you into my life. I want to receive you as my savior. And once you do that, he comes into your life and becomes your savior. And then now we'll start your walk to grow your salvation and grow your faith. It's very easy. As our address comes across the screen, if that's you, please contact us and I'll contact you back. And then if you already know who Jesus is, you wanna become a part of this wonderful family called Agape, God's people. Use that address, use that number, uh, our email, contact us, we'll get back with you. Oh, God bless you. I thank God for you, love all of you. Thank you so much for following and trusting me as I listen to God. Oh, I just believe that the best is yet to come. Let me say thank you for what you consistently do in your giving back to God, not to agape, not because of Pastor Whit, but because of your agreement with God. I thank you. Thank you so much. And then let's continue to pray for those who who are going through some things, those who may be sick, those who may be uh, going through other personal situations. Uh, please remember the body of Christ in prayer. Oh, I just believe that prayer changes things. I believe that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Let me also thank you for what you do for me. You don't have to do anything, but I've been taught folks don't have to do anything for you, but if they do, have enough common sense, they said, to say thank you. Thank you. I love you. I know you love me. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. My wife sends her love to all of you. And hey, stay safe. Stay safe. Be wise. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer of the vaccine, the booster. So I encourage you, please get it. I understand some may not want it because of whatever reason, uh, I'm praying that you don't catch this fire, but I'm a believer of it. And I want you to, I urge you, please get the vaccine, get the booster. We're getting through this. I'm excited about next Sunday. We'll be back in the building. Um, so I'll, I'll see some of you, but other than that, I'll feel your presence watching. God bless you. God keep you. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for your word. God, we pray for each and every believer. Pray for each and every person that's connected. God bless them. Thank you for having plans. Thank you for having the desire to take them to their destiny. Now may the grace of God bless you and keep you. May God lift up his hands upon you, give you peace both now and forevermore. Let every believer say amen. God bless you. I'm looking forward to seeing you on uh, the Word on Wednesday. And, and if you're connected on Tuesday for the Zoom Bible study or Saturday for the Saturday morning Bible study on Zoom, thank you for your uh, connection. But please connect with us on Wednesday or look at the video of the Bible study uh, for Wednesday, the Word on Wednesday. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you soon. Sleep.
listening, please cover them today, I pray. Jesus, whoever's watching, please protect them along the way. Wherever they go, please go with them. And let your grace and mercy follow them. I pray for favor, unusual favor and healing, supernatural healing and blessing. God did it. Amen.